is, oh, you don't know. Have you not heard? The everlasting God. He's not limited by time. The creator God. He's not limited by power. Does not grow weary and tired. His, understandable, his understanding is inscrutable. You're wasting your time to try to figure out. But in the meantime, even though you can't figure out what he's doing, he gives strength to the weary. And here to him who lacks might, he increases power. If you're weak, he'll give you more strength. Though young people grow weary and tired and vigorous young men stumble badly, those who wait on the Lord, do what they're supposed to do while they're waiting for the rain to come, will get three things. One of three things. They will get new strength, not yesterday's strength. They'll get new strength today because yesterday's strength is used up yesterday. And they will mount up with wings as eagles. For some of you, when your right time comes, God is going to stretch out eagle's wings and he's going to swoop down with his intervention. He's going to supernaturally, you've been looking for a job, he's going to just swoop down and fly you to the job. That's we eagle's wings because eagles would bear their babies up on their wings. But some of you, on the day you don't go job hunting, you're going to get a phone call. He's going to swoop down. On the day that you give up ever hoping to be married, Don Juan go swoop in. For some of you, he's going to intervene in a miraculous way on eagle's wings. For others of you, he says, you will run and not get tired. For some of you, he'll swoop down and lift you out. For others of you, he's going to make you run. He's just going to run with you. He's going to say, you keep on keeping on, but I'm going a, I'm to a jog with you. That's his interaction. Eagle's wings are his intervention, but when he runs with you, it's his interaction. You're just running and wondering where this strength is coming from. You're just single and having the best time of your life. Uh, never think, don't, don't want to get married because this run is sweet like it is. I like running by myself. This is nice run, okay? You just run into your chains, just having a good old time. Because he's running with you. That's his interaction. He's talking to you along the way. Keep going. You're going to make it. You're going to get there. But then there's some of you who are just tired. You can't run anymore. But he's got something for you too. Because he says they will walk and not become weary. Some of you will be too tired to run. You won't get God's intervention. You won't run alongside of God with interaction. You'll just get from him in nerve action. That's where he comes in. And because you're too tired to run, he'll just walk with you. He just put his arm around you. I know you're tired. Let's just walk. <laughs> You've been running for Jesus a long time. Let's just walk for a while right now. <laughs> Let's just walk. Let's walk. But you know, in either case, it's new strength. You're going through a trial, be patient. It doesn't mean do nothing. It means plant seeds. And you let him determine the latter and early reigns. Welcome. Welcome to The Real with Joseph Latman. I am Joseph Latman. Uh, welcome back, guys, to The Real. Uh, yeah, happy Wednesday, everybody. Hope everybody's having a good week. Happy hump day. Uh, yeah, I still, uh, you know, the last episode, my buddy Zach, that was a uh, probably my favorite episode I've ever done just because his, him and I's connection and, uh, you know, just some pretty cool, some of the feedback from that. Uh, reconnected with some other guys that him and I both uh, met at the same time him and I met when we were seven years old. And these are guys I haven't talked to in a long time because, uh, you know, just, you know, life happens as you get older. And, you know, I was away for a while. And so uh, it's been uh, unbelievable to uh, hear all the feedback from that episode. It was a lot of fun and uh, definitely looking forward to when Zach comes back on. And that was just a warm up. So uh, be ready for the next time. He might come on because it's going to be, uh, it'll be pretty fun. I'll just leave it at that. But uh, it was a special moment though for him and myself and uh, just for our families and everybody involved. It was, uh, it was really cool. And so uh, appreciate all the support and uh, people reaching out, reconnecting with some of you guys. And uh, But for today's show, uh, we got a good topic today talking about transitioning in life. And let me get this on the bottom of the screen here. Transitioning in life. And what I mean by this topic today is uh, I actually got this topic from a conversation I had with my mom 
uh, the other day. And then today we talked about it a little more when I finalized the show. And it's something I've been thinking about for a while. It's actually something I'm going through right now, which is, uh, you know, for the last eight years ago, around this time was when I started my uh, first day at the new high school I went to. It was a complete new school. I went to the same school from kindergarten to eighth grade, right? So eight years ago, around this time, I was in a whole new environment. And really looking back on it now, I didn't know at the time, but that really was the start of a journey all the way till today, an eight year journey. And so of a lot of ups and downs. And, you know, I had a plan going into that day eight years ago. And that plan was completely flipped to a 180, and it was complete opposite plan of what I had. But God had a different plan for me, and I'm glad because I wouldn't be sitting here today. And so, you know, through the years, yes, there was a lot of things I wanted. You know, I didn't get to do, I didn't get to date, I didn't get to uh, play ball, I didn't get to go through the normal, you know, process, which is fine, and I accept that. Because, like I said, God had a different plan. He put me there for a reason. I'm not a victim. I don't play the victim card. And I'm proud of where I am and how far I've come. And yes, you know, really in the last, this year, and within the last year, that's when I've, I've started to really get back to my real self and get out more and uh, start to, you know, do all the things I want to do. And it's still taking time. And it's a process. But, it is, you know, along the way, uh, God's been with me the whole time. And so, and he's going to get me through the end here. And I am pretty much, I mean, I feel pretty good where I am right now. And so, uh, yes, my patience gets tested and I get impatient sometimes and frustrated uh, because a lot of things I want or I see opportunities and I just, but all I can do is pray about it and put it in God's hand. And so, uh, and it's hard to do sometimes. I'm not going to lie to you guys. It's very hard to let go. And it's been hard for me to let go for a, a lot of time, a lot of things in the, over the years, but especially now because I feel like I'm closer than I've ever been. And so, uh, but again, I'm in a transition and transitioning to my true self and transitioning to the life I want to go to. So it feels very uncomfortable sometimes. I'm doing things now that are (laughs) out of my comfort zone in terms of interacting with people or going to places and putting myself out there. But uh, it does feel uncomfortable at times, but it's a good uncomfortable. It's a good tired. It's a good feeling to finally uh, be where I am. And so... The video I have for today is from the Anxiety Guy. It's a quick 10-minute video. I'm going to play it right through just to give a little more context on this topic. And then my man, Mike Antonis, we haven't we haven't seen a little bit. He's going to pop in and give his take on the topic, and we'll uh, dive into our conversation like we always do. But, um, yeah, so we're going to get into this topic today about transitioning in life and, uh, you know, going through new changes, new anything new now this excuse me this video here is primarily targeted more towards anxiety right and so i can get on the screen here get that full screen cool all right so this video here will kind of will go with the topic today it says title is is this happening to you during your anxiety and so uh and a lot of things he says in this video is stuff i'm going through right now and stuff a lot of people are going through right now in life and so uh, I know there's a lot of people, uh, people that may watch this, people younger than me that are in high school or college, school starting back up, you know, that's a transition. Uh, you're starting a new job. It's a transition. If you're where I am, you're going out of the old anxious ways, all your, the lifestyle you've been living, going into a new one. It's a transition. And uh, that's why I want to have Mike on today, too, because. If you know Mike's story, if you've been watching his show, Mike was in a transition one time too, and I'll let him explain that later, because uh, we like to give examples to kind of, you know, let you guys know that, hey, we've been there. And so, uh, yeah, I'm going to do stop all ranting and talking and uh, just get to the video. One second. All right, here we go. Warriors, I welcome you to another important video, my friends. Thank you so much for being with me here today and giving me your time and attention. Warriors, 
If you haven't already subscribed to the number one anxiety support channel on YouTube, please do so. And if you know anybody out there who's suffering and wants to become more than anxiety, please share this YouTube channel with them and let's help each other. Warriors, today what I want to show you is something that occurs during the healing journey. When this occurs, many times we interpret it as being a bad thing. But I want you to look deep within yourself today and ask yourself if you are in fact experiencing what I'm about to talk about. And number two, are you interpreting it as being a bad thing when in fact it's a great thing? It's a fantastic thing. You know what this thing is? It's called disconnection. Disconnection, Dennis? Yeah, disconnection. It's part of the process towards becoming that new, empowered, unique, creative, divine you. Let's understand what disconnection really is. Disconnection comes with the feeling of becoming distant towards others. Distant towards others. There's a feeling of being alone. You may be walking down the street and you notice people around you and it feels like you're watching them from a different perspective, a different angle. It's a little distance there. You may be discussing things with people, but you feel like there are walls blocking you from them, really interpreting what they're saying and really being engaged in the conversation. There is disconnect. Now, let me help you understand what's taking place right now. There is what I call a regrouping process taking place. Regrouping. Your system right now is adjusting itself and it, it's adjusting the external reality to fit with who you want to be. So if you find yourself feeling distant from people, friends, acquaintances, family members. Know that this is nothing more than a part of the transition that you're on. There will be people coming into your life, experiences coming into your life that are flowing in the same waves as you are currently flowing. Because when your emotional state shifts, so does your energetic body. So you are going to begin bringing into your experiences like-minded people, like-minded people. So this is nothing more than a regrouping process. I assure you, embrace it. What else is disconnection? Disconnection is a feeling of emptiness. Like you've got this feeling of, I just feel empty on the inside. And when I say the word emptiness, many times people think that it's a negative thing. Warriors, this is a positive thing. This is a great thing. I like to refer to it as being positive emptiness. Positive emptiness means that currently there is a gray area within you that needs to be filled. A gray area that needs to be filled filled with the type of identity you want to become, filled with the type of personalities you want to bring to your day. If you're feeling empty right now, understand that again, this is a part of the transition, moving away from what's been familiar, moving away from all the certainty and control and anxiety that you felt you consciously and unconsciously needed and was a part of you for so many years. You are moving. You are divorcing your anxiety and you are transitioning into someone new. So understand that positive emptiness is a good thing you get to rebuild. Beautiful. Beautiful. With disconnection also comes this feeling like we're moving further away from the physical world 
and we're becoming more curious about the energetic and spiritual world. I can't tell you how many questions I get each and every day about God. That interpretation is up to you, and as long as it serves and helps you, fantastic. But we find ourselves moving away from materialism and moving towards minimalism. You start to look around your house and go, I really don't need that, or, and I'm spending a lot of time on that. I could be spending more time on my self-care, on my self-love, self-worth, self-respect. I don't need these things. I don't need to hoard things anymore. And so when we move from being so attached to matter and this physical reality, and we move from that reality to a place of becoming more curious and in touch with energy and this spiritual world, you find that life will become more effortless. There's a sense of ease. There's a sense of deep underlying trust that you have for life and the ever unfolding and the changes that comes with life. What you need to do is you need to embrace the unknown. You need to welcome the uncertainties that you're currently feeling within this transition from who you were to who you want to be. My friends, the biggest challenge in anxiety recovery is resistance. You have the knowledge coming from here. You have the wisdom that you are attaining through meditations and reframing processes. The wisdom is coming. You know what to do. You know the behaviors that you need to act upon. But then there's a sense of resistance. And that resistance has nothing to do with the direction you want to go. And it has everything to do with trying to keep you in a place of familiarity, unease, and the addiction to suffering. Aren't you tired of suffering? Aren't you tired of drama? Aren't you tired of internal chaos? I know I was. And dissatisfaction was the greatest motivator that led me towards creating a plan that I could follow in order to heal myself. So let's understand disconnection more. Feeling disconnected from things only means that you'll be reconnecting with things you need to during this transition. If you currently feel disconnected from people, the physical reality, and you feel a sense of emptiness, my friends, embrace it, love it, and more than anything, as you did when you were a young child, explore it. Because as the days move on, you are going to be tested more and more. And I tell people this all the time. Don't think that anxiety recovery is such a linear path. As you move towards total transformation, this universe will test you. Moment by moment, you will be met with unexpected tests, and it's up to you to make use of those tests and to step up to those challenges and to enact exactly who you want to become in that moment. Don't allow certainty, control, and familiarity to suck you back into anxiety. You deserve more. You deserve better. And together, we will get you there. Understand that disconnection is a good thing. I love you all from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for spending some time with me. If you have any other questions on any of my programs, head on over here. And remember that you are always more than anxiety. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. And uh, I want to thank Dennis again for allowing me to share his videos. He's a good friend of mine. Um, and I wouldn't be here today without him. He's one of the main people to help me get to where I am now. But, uh, you know, guys, that video really, uh, 
like I said, that's something I'm going through right now. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> there's a lot he said there that I mean, I wrote down a ton of notes again, just listening to it. But I think the biggest thing is people got to remember is uh, when you're on this journey of healing and letting go and you know trying to help and better yourself and move on in your life, it's not a linear path. It doesn't mean that it's just everything becomes easy. It's not that it becomes hard before it gets easy. And uh, that's, I mean, spiritually speaking, sometimes God allows things to get hard before they get better. And uh, it's just to help you grow, to test you. Uh, but it's in those moments where you really start to, you got to look yourself in the mirror and you got to make a choice. Am I going to allow, like you said there, am I going to allow to the familiarity and the uh, discomfort and the what I mean by familiarity is, you know, what's been familiar, which has been living in a bubble. Let's be honest. That's at least for me. It was living in a bubble, you know, trying to get by every day, allowing my anxiety to control my life. So I got to remove myself from that. It's going to feel uncomfortable. It's like that gray area you talked about. And, you know, because you're there's an emptiness within you because you're starting something new. It's like it's a rebirth. It's what it is. And uh, not to forget everything from your past. Like for me, I'm reconnecting with my past a lot too. Like for instance, like I had my buddy Zach on, one of my best friends in life. Well, him and I will be friends forever. And but it's reconnecting with him, even uh, recently. You know, just picking up where we left off. And so uh, there was a lot there, like I said, that I can relate to right now. Uh, but the biggest thing I think is trust and. It's very hard. Like I said, it's it's very hard to let go and to trust because you want to control. You've waited so long. For me, I've waited so long for so many things. And you just got to trust and let go. And, and I like what he said, putting the right people in your life. And, you know, example I use a lot on this show because it's something a lot of people go through is singlehood. And so I'm a single person. I would love to meet somebody right now and maybe start a relationship site. Maybe I know that person right now. Maybe I have an idea. I don't know. But, uh, you know, I have to trust and let God bring the right person in my life at the right time. I can't focus on where I am in my, you know, I have to stay focused on where I am in my journey. I can't allow something to speed me up and feel like I, I, I like, you know, you can get to a, what I'm saying is you can get into a state of really pushing too hard and trying to, uh, you, you can get away from where you need to be. What I mean by that is if I focus around on all the things I don't have and want, like I, I would love to get in a relationship and find the person God has planned for me. I'd love to uh, continue growing out, going out more and more, uh, you know, upgrade my job. A lot of things, whatever. It is, I'm making examples, too. But whatever it is, you have to stay in the same speed, <laughs> take it step by step each day. If you allow yourself to get sped up and to start to get a little greedy, that's what I was looking for. If you start to get a little greedy, a little too ambitious, you could speed yourself up and you, you could kind of overdo it and go too soon. You know, that's, I think a lot of that has to start with, for me at least, uh, allowing God's timing to play out because his timing is perfect. His timing knows what's best for me. And so, uh, yeah, that's, that's, it's hard to do. It's hard to let go, but you have to allow. It doesn't mean you don't do anything. But you have to, there's a healthy balance. And a lot of times it's more being patient, allowing. But in that process, focus on growing yourself. You're, this is what you're doing. You're becoming your true self. You know, and spiritually speaking, I heard a sermon yesterday I listened to uh, from Tony Evans. He said, this is the time where you should be filling your heart spiritually. And that's something I've been doing for a while now. And I'm starting, it's helped me a long way. And I've seen, it's, <laughs> I've also seen when I started doing that, how much further I've gotten. And how close I am now to a lot of things. And so, uh, yeah, and then the right, putting the right people around you. And that could be people from your past coming back in your life or new people. You know, Mike, who I'm about to have on here in a second, Mike and I met two years ago. And Mike's one of my good friends in life now. And he was somebody new. And he's, Mike's, we've helped each other out. He's helped me with this podcast. When he starts his podcast, I'm going to help him, you know, and vice versa. He's a family friend of, of a friend of my family, if I could speak, uh, but, uh, you know, and even with, like I said, with relationships with, for me, for singlehood, whoever God brings in my life, that person 
will be the right person for my life and I'll be the right person for her. And there'll be an understanding for, you know, how we can help each other grow and uh, put all the, you know, it's, our society is just so much labels and just so much uh, competition with each other. You know, it's just it's such a rat race. And so, you know, that's something I want to get away from. And, but I also surround myself with the right people and with the people that doesn't mean we think alike and everything because there's God made us all different for a reason. We're all unique, but just similar in a lot of ways and how we approach life and just our, our speed of life and just, you know, just, uh, especially with godly people, most importantly, um, especially now more than ever. And so, uh, yeah, I know I said a mouthful there. Sorry if I ranted a little bit, but I have a lot on my mind recently. And so joining me now, though, and you know what time it is, time to put the hater shades on because Mike brings the energy. Uh, <laughs> Mike, uh, I know I said a mouthful there for about 10 minutes or whatever the hell it was. Uh, <laughs> You're <all> good. <clears throat> feel a lot better now, though. But anywho, um, what's your take on the topic from the video? I mean, just your initial reaction to everything. I know it's a lot. but <laughs> Oh, it's a, it's a lot. I mean, if the main thing, main topic being transitions, I mean – Right. And just the first thing that popped into my head when I was thinking of that is coming from like a Christian perspective, God is all about transitions, all about it. I mean, as born again Christians, you know, when we accept Christ, it's called born again. It's a transition mm -hmm. in your life. You know, it's the biggest step you took, you know, at that point. You're transitioning into a new life. I mean, all, it's all over the Bible, too. I mean, look at the Apostle Paul. His transition was a little bit more intense. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that initially he was named Saul. He, you know, persecuted a bunch of people, was killing Christians, you know, for Rome mm -hmm. and uh, for the, um, uh, the Jewish government at the time. And uh, Jesus put scales over his eyes and then was like, hey, man, why are you persecuting me? And he's like, oh, I'm sorry. And he goes, okay. Well, if you're sorry, you're going to live this way now, do this things. And also, I'm going to change the S to P. Your name's Paul now. I think it sounds better. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's God is all about transitions and it's always for the better. You know, mm -hmm. um, you know, I've had a lot of transitional life recently. You know, I'm out of the car business after eight mm -hmm. years. Yeah, it was a big step, big transition, scary step in transition, you know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's so familiar to you for eight years. I mean, yeah, and oh, that's just, that's really the only like career you know right. I held my entire adult life. Yeah, because you started that fresh out of high school, right? Pretty much, yeah. I was eighteen when oh, I came yeah. in. Yeah, I think you had a lot happen to you that time period too. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, good news. I've actually reconciled with uh, that church and those people very recently. Really? Yeah, it's it's changed a lot for the better. Um, wow, that's and, awesome. Uh, yeah, it is pretty awesome. I'm, I'm getting those uh, relationships back. And, uh, you know, we both realized, you know, I was bitter. You know, they were bitter, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's cool to just that how God does that. Like, no matter, cause he's, you know, he's always working on you every year of your life, you know. <laughs> you know, it's funny that you say that. Thing. Yeah. It's, oh, I'm, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I'm, I'm, I'm actually proud of you. You said that because that's awesome, man, because I've, doing the same thing in my life you know i don't want to say reconciling reconciling but just reconnecting for me right and uh you know it, it's something else man it's like it's funny though you you were open really open about that on your first episode on the show and it's crazy only what three months later <laughs> that's pretty awesome yeah. and same thing for me i came out and said everything i need to say on my first show and the truths I'll set you shall set you free, <laughs> and uh, but also you might also rehash some things in your life, and that's good because you don't want to carry that around you the rest of your life. That's not something you don't you know. And that's part of the transition. It's how do you like you said interpretations. You almost interpret life differently. You interpret everything differently, and you know, for me in my life where I am now, it's like I was saying earlier a little like when I went on my rant. Uh, yeah, you know, I just don't. I don't care anymore what people think. I don't care. When I was younger, I used to really care. I used to, cause I had a lot of pressure put on me and I had a lot of standards. I had to, especially going to private school and sports. And man, when I got older though, and I went through the hard times and the down moments, I realized none of that shit matters. And at the end of the day, what's the point of it? You know, it's, 
right. the only thing that matters is between you and God and are you content with you and are you happy in what you're doing in your life and maybe not happy but because happiness is uh, you know it can be up and down sometimes you have sad days sometimes you have good days part of life but are you neutral about things you know are you content and so uh, but I want to go back to so you, it's because you just brought that up when you went through your transition though uh, you know, you had a loss, you, and you, now you're out of the car business. What were kind of the feelings you were going through that, would you have kind of that gray area that, you know, feels very uneasy. It's something new. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So with, it was like with any decision, there are pros and cons and like with any decision, how it affects your mental state. I was feeling, you know, two, two different ways because, you know, especially like, you know, I was career wise, I was excited in a way mm -hmm. that I was trying something new because it was almost like going on an adventure almost. Right. Because mm -hmm. it's like, oh, I'm going into unknown waters kind of thing. Um, and being the car business, you know, everyone's like, oh, you'll be back. You'll be back in a couple months. <laughs> I know that is. Yeah. My, I see with my dad and all you guys, you know, you guys are all like, you know, we all know each other. And yeah. Um, but at the same time, yeah, I mean, you feel like I felt uneasy, mm -hmm. you know, I felt scared, worried. I mean, just, I was, you know, it's, it's worse before it gets better. Um, because, you know, I felt so anxious at first, you know, like, mm -hmm. oh, thank God for my wife. Cause she was like, oh, you know, I'd be fine. You have some sleepless fine. nights too. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Major sleepless nights. And, uh, and with, as far as my, you know, my, the loss of my father, you know, that transition of life, just going, you know, without him, mm -hmm. um, in, uh, in our world, it was, uh, that was, that transition took more time, you mm -hmm. know, just the, the whole process of grief, you know, uh, trying my best to like, cause at the time, you know, I was still very bitter at God. So I was just trying mm -hmm. to under, I came from more of a place of understanding. And over time, luckily I started to, you know, look to God more for help, for advice, you know, for, to get me through it. And he used, uh, luckily a lot of, he worked through a bunch of friends, family, loved ones to, to get me out of that. But, you know, transition is something that humans nas don't like. I especially don't like, I've said before on this show, you know, I'm a creature of comfort, <laughs> you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm, a am I'm naturally lazy. Um, it's just how I am and it sucks, <laughs> but yeah. you know, <laughs> transitioning into like becoming a better man mm -hmm. you know uh we we all have to do that uh to just transition and becoming better people and one yeah. thing that um the anxiety guy didn't mention that i thought would have uh added mm -hmm. a lot onto the the point too is as you're transitioning into you know a more godly person a better person whatever you want to call it um you know god calls us and Jesus said this parable after he called out like a bunch of hometowns, right? He was in mm -hmm. Jerusalem. He called out all of his hometowns that were gathered there because he's like, Hey, you've been seeing all these cool things I'm doing and you haven't repented yet. And he's just calling them out like, woe to you, you know, that kind of stuff. Right. And then he comes out and says, but, you know, he always did this. He's like, but, you know, there's, there's a flip side to this. Um, if you bear my yoke, you know, you'll be saved. You know, you'll, you'll find happiness, you know, you'll transition into a better life. Just bear my yoke. Mm. And what he meant when he said that was like, love people, serve people, have a serving heart. Um, you know, the apostle Paul talks about that a bunch, you know, that adds on to it as you become a more godly, loving, more, you know, rounded person through your transitions in life, going on to, uh, serve and love others, you know, um, because that's what God calls us to do. That's all really he asks of us after, you know, we love him and accept his son is okay, cool. Now serve others, love others. Mm -hmm. And that does a lot for you as a person too. When you stop putting, when you stop putting yourself uh, first, and I mean that in like a, in a selfish way, you know what right. I mean? Not like it's important to think of yourself. Like, yeah, self care is very important. Right. Right. I'm saying more so like, you know, being selfish, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, but sure. once you learn, 
once you learn to start doing that and be more serving, it changes your mindset on everything. And I struggle with that a lot. I struggle with serving people. You know, the mm -hmm. car business is all about that. You know, right. it's hard to break <laughs> kind of sales yeah. mindset of like me, 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 you know? No, for sure. And I, uh, totally. And I think that's why when I started this podcast, I remember I mean, here I had people around me like, Hey man, when you start that, cause all that you know about your anxiety, what you can share, uh, it would really help you a lot. And I didn't really realize that. And I still kind of don't, you know, cause I'm still, it's only been four months. And so, right. but I have started to see some of the effect. It was a little weird at first having people, not in a bad way, but it is different to have people reach out to you and be like, telling you some real life, like personal pro privately, you know, and yeah. these are people that I've known or just met recently, or maybe people I, I kind of knew never really talked. And so it's been kind of surreal, you know, sometimes it's kind of like, okay, this is new. <laughs> I appreciate people looking to me like that, or I don't say it's me. I think it's more God working through me. It's like, oh, God works through you and, you know, every, right. you know, but, uh, it was this, you know, that, but that was a transition. That was a, this has been a transition for me. And so, but now I feel a lot more comfortable and I, you know, I've gotten used to it now, but, uh, slowly, but I think the biggest thing though, that you said that I take away too is trust. Because when you're right. going into a transition, you want to find things that you can cling on to. It's like with health anxiety, you and I both have, or, you know, we've, I know you go, you went through your health anxiety spell. I went through mine really bad. Occasionally I still have, but for the most right. part, now I'm on to different, you know, parts. But uh, for instance, with the health anxiety, if you get a symptom, if you feel a certain way, what do you want to do? You want to go get reassurance. You want right. to run to comfort. So a lot of times what do people do, they get on Dr. Google, they call the doctor, they drive themselves to the emergency room in some cases. Uh, and a lot of times, for the most part, I mean, one in four people in the ER, I read, there's a stat. One in four people in the ER right now are there because of anxiety and panic. And so... Wow. I didn't know that, Sad. That's wild. One in four people. And it makes sense. And uh, yeah, one in four people. And so... I mean, if you think about it like that, that's a lot of people that are, there's, there's, like I said, with trust. And so, you know, when you're going in a transition, like with health anxiety, like I said, you want to go to your reassurance. And a lot of times they'll tell you you're healthy, you're fine. This is what it is. Uh, you know, you just have an anxiety attack. And I've heard so many stories. I've had my own experiences where I thought I was having a heart attack or something or something was going wrong. And, you know, you just don't feel right. And just, it's just like, why is this happening? It won't stop. It feels very weird. And then the doctor right. would tell you, once the doctor would tell me, like, oh, you're fine. And I'm like, okay, then it goes away. But you still have that uncertainty, right? And so, right. you know, you still like, you're afraid of that happening again. And yeah. I think that, that's the biggest thing is to trust because for at least for me, Mike, is I'm afraid of uh, <laughs> the cat creeping it behind you. I'm afraid yeah. of... Uh, that's that's the fear for a lot of people to get in that gray area of disconnect, becoming a new person. The new true self is your true self is because you're afraid of going back to where you were. Because where you were, it was very scary. It was right. very traumatizing. It was very for me, you know. I know for you, it was it was hard. You know, you don't want to go back to that. But right. I think that's where certain things like reframing, like he talked about in the video, uh, and anybody out there looking for a reframing playlist, go to his channel and it'll say reframing he'll take you through like a guided you know reframing visualization thing and uh, it's great but expression you know saying the truth uh reframing all these things to let it out not suppress it you know that helps you make peace with the past and in turn i think your trust starts to grow more because when you make peace with your past and the trust starts to happen <laughs> as we're just the cat is invading the podcast here but uh no, it's all good. But, uh, you know, when you have that trust, rebuilding that trust within yourself and making peace with the past, you know, and so I guess kind of, and I say all that to what you just said, what's kind of this process been like uh, reconnecting with people from the church and uh, kind of maybe give a little, just a brief backstory in case somebody new is watching this, you know, they don't understand what you're talking about with the church, but and kind of what, what is that, what's this whole process been like though for you? I mean, quick summary, I was 18. I had spent most of uh, my youth in this church. 
And then um, I met my now uh, wife um, in the church um, and we fell in love, but we did the whole sin of sin of the flesh kind of thing. And I got excommunicated for, uh, for it. Uh, fast forward, you know, six, seven years later. And because of that, you know, I was a very rebellious, bitter, you know, I, I don't want to say ex-Christian, but like I was trying to actively piss God off, I guess yeah, you could say. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I mean, God's not, he's not, how do I word, how do I phrase this? He's used to it. He's used to rebellious <laughs> behavior mm-hmm. from his kids. That's just something he. It's not to he, let you go out there at the deep end. Just yeah. Like, really, you know, he'll make a point. And um, basically, like, you know, I've been church hopping for a while, you know, trying to, you know, read my Bible and everything. And, you know, you really do need a body of Christ or, you know, a church people you, you know, you love, you can find in that are fellow, you know, Christians to like help you through. Because like com- community is important. Right. Right. Yeah. And that's what, you know, Christ even says, like, you know, hey, I want you to gather together, worship me, you know, read, mm-hmm. read the Bible, worship God. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, came to my, uh, best friend's wedding because I was praying about it for a while. And a lot of people from that church, cause he never left. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of people from that church were there and I was expecting, you know, at first for them to be like, I don't want to say like off puts, not the right word. I hmm, just kind of like distant, I guess. A little stagnant. A little stagnant around me. Mm -hmm. But no, they weren't. You know, we had great conversations and it kind of just reminded me that like, I don't know if I kind of like God telling me like, hey, I already gave you a church that you, you know, fit pretty well in. Mm -hmm. It's like you you left out of your own decisions, you know, Um, now you're older (laughs) and Mm -hmm. you've been through you've been through the mud a little bit. Yeah. So maybe you should try and, you know, fix it. And uh, it's like the timing's better now. Yeah. And yeah. it really has been. It's been really, really cool. A little surreal. Everybody's a lot older yeah. than I remember them, but mm-hmm. <laughs> it's... no, it's I'm, I'm, I've kind of been going through the same thing in my own life, especially in the last. I'd say recently. I'll just you know recently. I'll leave it at that. I've done some things, kind of tried to reconnect with people, and I've had to talk to people I've never talked to, and it is weird. It is different. It's you know, and a lot of these, I've reconnected with a lot of people from that time period when I was. I went to a new school and everything was bad. When I left that school, I was very angry. I was very, very angry, very bitter. And I felt like a lot of people were, you know, didn't treat me right. Or, uh, right. you know, I just felt very misinterpreted. Like, if that makes sense. And just very, uh, I felt like I was portrayed in an image that I wasn't. But a lot right. of it, as time went on, you know, I've sat and realized and things slow down. And you start to really be able to think back on it. You know, at that time... Nobody was really mature at that age. You know, we're in high school. You're not that mature. And then, but no. even the adults around me, my authority figures, uh, nobody knew the knowledge. And it, it, what it showed me the most with anxiety, for instance, was the lack of knowledge on anxiety, the lack of uh, that a lot of people have. And, you know, it, it, it was just a hall. It was all just a big misunderstanding. And it was at the wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong circumstances. You know what I mean? Right. So, yeah. But without that, I wouldn't be who I am today. I wouldn't know the things I know today. My family wouldn't be where we are today. And the people around me, and I'm able to help people now. And, uh, but it doesn't mean I won't reconnect with people from that place either. And I have. Right. And a lot of them, it's been great conversations. And it's been awesome to get to really know them a little more. And they get to know me for who I really am. Because a lot of people really didn't get to know the real me. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty cool, man. But it's. I keep saying it. It's when you say the truth and you start speaking the truth, no matter what people, you know, because that's a lot. Of, that's, that's, I think that's the biggest thing is when you worry, you want to tell people how you feel and what happened, saying the truth, you're afraid of their reaction. You're afraid of their, how they may interpret it, how they may, could it turn them off? You know what I mean? And so, but when you speak the truth, a lot of times, at least I've noticed, it sets you free. And a lot of times, what you thought, like you said, you, when you walked in, you felt a little stagnant, and, you know, but a lot of times we'll, the movies we run in our head, the illusions we put in our head, how what we how we think people perceive us, 
Uh, this is a big thing for me. It was never what you thought it was. You know what I mean? It right. was never. And a lot of times, most people, we're all going through the same shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're all, we all go through life. This, everybody does the same thing. doesn't matter what status you are or whatever. You have more money. It doesn't matter. We all go through life the same way. You know, we're all going to die at some point and you go to heaven or hell. And that's it. You know, <laughs> but in saying all that, I love what you said there about, you know, because I've done, because I, I, compl- I completely understand what you're saying. You walk, you know, you're, like I said, you're afraid of what people's interpretations might be. But when you start speaking the truth and start standing in truth, it's just how it sets you free and just that free will you start to feel and just how your life starts to take off and you start to realize right. a lot of the things weren't what you thought they were. Yeah. I mean, I love saying this. You hit the nail on the head. (laughs) (laughs) Love saying that. I feel like a 56 year old man when I say that. Um, But I mean, that's so true. And, you know, it's really cool to hear that, you know, we're both kind of like doing that because, you know, and I was worried about what, you know, Hannah was going to say, because I thought she was more bitter Hmm. than I even I was. Right. And uh, now, yeah, like we went to the Summit County Fair with them and she was like catching up with some of the, the girls from there. And I was like, I was like, this is wild. I had my first <laughs> Sherbert shake. I was about to ask you because you told me about this. this is, what is this Sherbert shake? Oh, <laughs> my God, dude. It is life changing. <laughs> Ice bucket. I think it's called an Akron. For the love of God, go there. I So it is, from my knowledge, it's like just a milkshake. Right but with sherbet and they put like this sour, like jelly kind of stuff in it. I got one that was like grape and something else flavored. Um, it was called, I think it was called purple napple. So yeah. So it's grape and apple sherbet with like whipped cream on top and um, like the sour jelly. Mm-hmm. It was one of the most delicious sweets I think I've ever put in my body. Yeah. Cause I texted you that night, you know, were text each other i was like yeah tell me about it and you're like you're like yeah i ate so much food bro i just gotta go home and relax let's go to sleep he's like Dude. oh i, I felt like, awful i felt awful <laughs> the next <laughs> day oh, all the ears all the fried food my best mm. friends were there and um justin he uh he was like oh i'm gonna get myself another helping of fried oreos because his wife's from new mexico right mm-hmm. and people forget there are a lot of people in ohio like Ohio, I think is like fifth or sixth in population in the whole country. There's a lot of how many cities we have, like city right. cities, right? And uh, so th- we have like 11 million people here. She's from mm-hmm. New Mexico, and they have like maybe two million, or like it's like right around what the state of West Virginia has. So not a lot of people. They only have a state fair in in Santa Fe, so you mm-hmm. have to drive to Santa Fe if you want to go to any sort of fair. So she never went to a fair. So Justin's like, I'm gonna fire everything we're gonna have a good old like time <laughs> and uh yeah no her first fair experience was cool but i was just like that was so wild to me in my little ohio american mind i was like y- y'all don't got fairs where are you from right like, what's, what's wrong with you yeah, well, we, 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 got, we got fairs festivals every week we got we have fairs every concerts week. we got every and the city we <laughs> a town we're in we're area we're both in yeah, we only, we only live like ten minutes from each other, five ten minutes, and yeah, there's so always kind of something fair. going on every weekend around here. But yeah, we got fairs. We got, <laughs> I guess they don't in New Mexico, but uh, yeah, but I mean, it was it was it was awesome. You the ice bucket in Akron, it's a real business. They had a um, like a trailer out there that they were doing, and uh, the owner I, I assume was the guy who was uh, serving. I didn't catch his name, but really cool guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he was just like excited when he gave me yeah. the sherbet shake. He's like, "You're gonna love it. I know you're gonna love it." Uh, yeah, I, that, that, I would have to make sure I do like ten bike rides before I go to that. And oh, dude, do twenty. Dude, yeah, maybe twenty. Because yeah, I because I you know, I I wouldn't say I eat the best. Not that I eat terrible. Because I actually cleaned out my diet a lot and I'm pretty consistent right. with it. But you know, if I was going to you know go indulge for a night, I would definitely have to. Uh, prepare myself for that but uh that does sound good i'm gonna have to go try that you said ice bucket in akron yeah i think it, they're on copley i'm pretty sure right, well they're getting a free advertisement right here so yeah they are so but, they deserve uh, it all right yeah i guess so you speak that highly of it so uh but no that's awesome i mean that you were able to 
reconnect with these people and uh yeah and it's awesome that you've been able to i mean i knew you know i think you may be assumed but i knew when you uh started this like you'd be helping a lot of people for sure but also Mm -hmm. just the amount of people that would reach out that you didn't maybe i'm sure you're getting this a lot like you didn't think would reach out like the the last people you would have assumed right absolutely well (laughs) it's funny i never there's people that i've for some reason I've reconnected with even in the last couple of weeks. I don't say reconnect like I connected with. Let's put it as that. And I never thought I'd have an opportunity to again. Like I just thought it was over. Like I just move on. I forgot about that person. But it's just I'm it's kind of surreal, like you said. That's why I'm kind of like processing it still as you could tell. It is like right. it's just incredible what God has done for me, what he's done for you. But it it's just uh yeah i mean it's just unreal like how i'm how he's moving me right now and where he's who he's moving me back around and it doesn't mean i don't know where it'll go but it's uh just take it one day at a time but it's just uh yeah i I can't say anything else it's just surreal that's that's all i could say it's just surreal it's an awesome feeling you know like when i did my last episode with my buddy that's him and i are like brothers i mean with zach and uh yeah, that was a surreal moment, you know, just for to sit up there and tell the stories and all the I mean, him and I went through so much stuff together. So much stuff. I mean, we were like true childhood best friends, you know what I mean? Through and through because we went through everything together. And so and our families were so close and we still are close. And uh, you know, yeah, it's just been surreal, man. It's just uh like I keep I keep reiterating, but it's it's, it's the truth. The truth shall set yeah. you free. <laughs> and so yeah uh just one, aligning myself with truth with god's truth i know you've done that in your life just you know just trying to put on the full armor of god every day trying to spend more time with christ every day trying to and you're just giving it all to him you know i've I, and with all this though i've had some i've been tested a little bit recently with my patience and because i want something right now you know it's like my right. buddy when i had joe zavarelli on two episodes ago he was talking about that he's like i want something you know, I get impatient. I want, I want it now. I want it now. And when you get so close to something, you feel like you can taste or you have an opportunity. It, it does. It really starts to challenge you. It's like a moment where you got to like, okay, what do I do here? It's like a gray right. area and it's a transition. And for me, I just try to every day more than ever. I've been listening to more sermons every day. I've been listening, I'm just trying to put myself more in, god's hands every day and so that's really that's all you can do in life yeah and absolutely yeah and you know I, no go ahead oh, i was just gonna say you know if doing that is like the most important thing you can do like I've said this previously on a show you know god just wants to talk to you mm-hmm. you know it could be about nothing like you might not you know every prayer doesn't need to be asking for help sometimes I mean, you just gotta listen yeah that's something i've actually learned recently from a charles stanley I've actually I've been studying more Charles Stanley and listening to his work, and uh, I really love what I hear. He's incredible his work. But he said that one time in a sermon I listened to recently. He says, "He goes sometimes a lot of people that go into prayer, which is awesome, and they you do a lot of the talking. But he said sometimes maybe you just need to go in there and listen. You know, right. Just go in there and just allow God to listen. That's a, and it's like same thing with anything in life. When we talk about the balance between doership and allowance." Sometimes you just got to allow things to play out and you're never as far away as you think you are, you know, right. you're, you're really not. And, uh, cause I don't, I think God brings a lot, brings certain things and people in your life at the certain times. And, uh, it's for a reason. I think, you know, everything's, he allows things to happen for a reason in some right. way. And so, uh, but yeah, I mean, I guess we can kind of hit on that more, I guess. Cause I think that's a, good that's something new to me like i said it's just listening to god what are some ways that you do to like just to listen to him to see what he you know i mean try to get the direction that clarity the guidance that you a lot of us seek well when you know if the way god speaks to us especially now is um generally through like he i mean he can speak through us Lit, uh, you know, speak to us in so many different ways. You know, he might answer prayers through a, a brother or sister in Christ. You know, you, you're mm-hmm. praying about something. Oh man, I'm 
really worrying about going on this canoeing trip. I don't have a canoe. And then somebody just randomly, I'm just using this as like a silly example. Right. Um, no, you're good. But, uh, you know, brother and sister in Christ might just approach you. Hey, man, uh, you know, I, I'm bringing an extra kayak. I, I just don't know why I did. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, oh, sh- sweet. Or, you know, um, it could be you praying about something. Then you happen upon a Bible passage that kind of has the answer to your question or some uh, affirmation about what you're struggling with, whether it be doubt or, you know, problems in life or what have you. And sometimes he can just give you a straight up, you know, sign. Um, but it's just learning to what I do personally, because I, um, I'm really bad at memorizing things is I keep a prayer journal. Mm. So like if I'm praying about something and then I'll like check off if it's an answered prayer. Mm-hmm. You know, so like, cause I've just started doing that. Cause I realized like, man, you know, when's the last time I thanked God for an answered prayer? And it's mm-hmm. like, I don't remember if I, if I have recently. No, I, I, I try to do the same. I'm glad you said that. Cause I've tried to journal a lot too. Right. Just write, sometimes just writing things out and seeing it helps you to, or saying it, you know, it helps you to process it more and yeah. see it for what it is. But I, yeah, I try to do the same thing. That's, and I learned I've not well, Tony yet, but I've always been taught that since I was a kid was to make sure you thank the Lord for every you know you don't get so caught up in everything you want. He knows what you want, he knows what you need most importantly, but also be thankful and be content with what you have as well because it can go just like that. You could lose everything. You could start to lose things. You know, you could be right. ungrateful and start to be uh you can have everything to be very pissed off and want more and you're not content. You know, you got to right. be content with what you have and where God has you. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. Drinking out of a jug of water because I, I worked out for the first time today in a while. So now I got to act like every other bodybuilder. Yeah, oh, man. Now you're going to be Mr. Bulk, huh? And... <laughs> <laughs> you caught me off guard with that. I want to see. <laughs> oh, God. Hey. <laughs> I, hey, I had to spit my drink out of last show. I can't say I can't repeat what Zach said, but uh, <laughs> he said something about NBA players, and I went back and watched it a hundred times. He maybe spit my drink out. <laughs> oh, oh you right there, <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Just oh, and for anyone for wondering, this isn't this isn't a one hitter. I promise. This is called fume. It's an essential oils inhaler. It's to yeah. it's a quitting thing. Yeah, you can I'm, use that. Just, yeah, I'm. I'm, you're just I'm quitting. There. Yeah, I'm quitting nicotine. <laughs> trying oh, to get all man. healthy. There's all another right. transition that sucks. Quitting nicotine. I I can't relate to that. I don't. I never drink or smoke. But um, I know you can. I'm proud of you, though, man. I'm proud of you. You're trying yeah. to make changes. That's all that matters. Oh but, my god. Yeah, I want to see. Uh, what are you? Are you trying to get all bulked up, or what? What do you? What's your goals here? You just want to be. I'm just trying to get healthy. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> I was just saying, we're gonna see Mike just shredded, to ripped. To just I like, was. There was a time you may not believe that door. I was actually shredded because my. So I open and rolled to falls after my parents moved to Stowe because, like, you know, like angsty teenager. I don't want to start school in a new place, mom, dad. I hate you. And then, uh, you know, Oliver, shush. and um. So they open enrolled me. They were like, just make sure you keep your grades up. I didn't. So I did graduate from Stowe at the end of it. But um, my stepdad had to drive me to um, school every day. And the only time he could uh, drive me to school was at like five in the morning because he worked in Aurora at a factory. Mm -hmm. So he's like, I got to drop you off at five in the morning on the dot. You can go to the NAT and work out until you got to go to school so i did that for like two years <laughs> and so at one point in time for five days a week i worked out for like an hour and a half and i was indeed like i weighed my top weight i weighed like 187 mm-hmm. like very barely any body fat i looked good i looked real good <laughs> and now i'm just like i'm like a string bean gumby of a man you know but I'm married. Who do I got to impress? All right, you're married. That's all that matters. As long as she's, like, as long as she's yeah, good with you, who cares? I, I already, I already <laughs> trapped her. All right, you don't give a shit with anybody. Thinks, but, uh... <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm just trying to get healthy. You know, I'm uh, trying to eat better and, uh, you know, just trying to 
you know, get some strength back because, right. you know, once you hit your late twenties, I'm pretty sure that's something that you just start thinking about like, man, I'm almost 30. Like, do I really want to be like, well, it, it helps know? everything too. I mean, I, shit, man, when I got, when I got out, <laughs> when I stopped everything shut down when I was like 15, for, till I was 15 all the way till I was about 19. I didn't mm-hmm. really do a whole lot of any working out, and I gained a lot. I was put on medications too. I was on a couple different medications. I right. was really depressed and everything, but I would overeat because my health anxiety. Dude, I got, I mean, I was, I got way too, like, I was way unhealthy. And so, uh, but then when I started, I got a bike and I just started biking around, and the biking led to more things. Now I have like an actual program I've been doing for like two years now. You know, I work out every day basically. And so, uh but no i mean you'll see too it's just you feel better too about yourself but but it just helps you something about moving around just moving getting out just moving you know right it helps you clear your mind getting adrenaline out you got to anger yeah it helps with anxiety it helps anxiety more than anything but it it helps helps me too blood flow yeah everything but it helps me sometimes when i'm out on the bike uh like i love being out on like on the bike when i'm out on the trails i go to the city a lot but Sometimes I like to get away from that to speed more. Uh, oh, yeah. like the bike trails, which is me. And God. Beautiful trails in Ohio, too. We got some of the most beautiful trailheads here. And right where we are, too. There's great trails. I mean, but sometimes when I'm out on those trails and I'm listening to something or I'm listening to music or I get a lot of ideas and a lot of just, uh, I guess you could say, like clarity of sometimes on things, too. And I know a lot of people have this in working out. You're in the middle of working out because you're. You know, you're you're sweating, you're burning off a lot of fumes, I guess you could say, but you, yeah. you start to get clarity in your mind. It's just like it's a great way to find clarity and relief. Oh yeah. Um I tried to the only downside is I tried to do the things I used to do when I worked out. And Don't like <laughs> I didn't hurt myself, but there was that one point oh, when I'm like nearing the end of my workout, where like, man, I'm feeling lightheaded as hell. <laughs> hey, you gotta hydrate. Pre- you gotta get yourself prepared. I, I have the Gatorade, man. I have the aid. I'm, I'm gonna hit you. I'm gonna get you on the stuff I use. It, it's way better. I'll, I'll get you. I'll tell you what I do, and you'll be fine. All right. Is it is it like body armor? Ooh, the aloe vera juice. No, I actually drink Bio Steel. Bio Steel. Bio Steel, <laughs> which is like the cleanest. I mean, you, anything you can get at the store, there's no sugar in it. It's clean electrolytes and good <laughs> energy, too. I, I use that. Uh, anybody that follows me, Laird Superfood, Laird Hamilton, I use his products. Uh, <laughs> I do, and I have other drink. I'll drink Propel. And then obviously water more than anything. At least drink half your body weight a day in water. Oh, shit. And, uh, oh, yeah. And, uh, and the biggest, That's I've always done this. I learned from a guy. I used to go to a uh, speed and strength conditioning coach when I was 13, 14 years old. Like this guy, he's no, he's well known around Akron, Coach John Legrere. He he actually trained Butch Reynolds. He trained Lone Carter. He trained Paris Campbell. He trained a lot of these bigger name athletes. And uh, mm-hmm. so I learned. I went to him for like a, a good year or so, maybe a little less. But uh, and he taught me a lot about all that stuff. Like any biggest thing he got me on was. Post workout, low fat chocolate milk. I have heard that. I have yeah, heard that's a great that. post workout drink because of the sugars it and, yeah. you need in it. and protein. Yeah. Yeah. That's, so I've been doing that for, gosh, I, almost 10 years now. True Moo is the truth. True Moo. I use Fairlife for, I actually try to buy local, like farm stuff. Yeah. I don't know. It's a little more clean, but, uh, you can get that. It's it's a little more pricier, but I, it tastes a lot better too. But I don't know. It depends. And I just gotta get what you gotta get. But <laughs> right. Uh, but no. It's so well, you're back. You're working out again. So that's good. Yeah. Uh, we'll see where, where Mike's going. We want to see. You, are we gonna see you shredded and bulked? Maybe not. I don't know. I mean, if I get shredded, that'd be cool. I don't know <laughs> if. Uh, well, I am kind of losing my hair. So if I get shredded, then I can be like one of those like buzz cut beard having like shredded dudes in the like early thirties. So I don't, I don't know if Hannah would like that. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> if I lose my hair, you have to deal with it. <laughs> you might look like a rager, dude. Like a <laughs> you're gonna like kick some ass every day or something. Yeah, and in in truth, I'm just like, oh, what kind of. What kind of ice cream do you use for your banana splits? <laughs> it's just like asking, like, oh, 
just naturally sourced. Oh, man, I love me a banana split. Just. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, yeah. So there you go. There's a little self self care topic for you guys today. We hit on. Yeah. But, uh, before Work we get out, out of here, so if you're new here, do we do this segment with Mike towards the end? What's your uh, your book of the week? What have you been into recently? Because everybody knows Mike is a huge book reader. I'm just curious what Mike's reading because every time I text him, like the one that I text you to come over and watch UFC, you're like, hold on, I'll be finished reading this chapter and I'll be over. And I was like, all right. Yeah. <laughs> Click. And then, and then I was like, well, what are you reading? You told me all about your, I didn't know you are this big of a reader until recently. So, Oh, yeah. Did, book a week. I tried a book a week. Sometimes your, uh... it takes me 10 days, depending on the length of the novel. Right. And so what, What's your this... book right now? This novel, everybody's heard of it. It's probably his best. Stephen King's The Stand. I am a huge, 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 huge Stephen King fan. I think if you're uh, an American or any English speaking person, or I'm sure he's been translated into other things, but he's one of the best authors that we've uh, had in the modern era. And uh, I have had The Stand on my shelf for a while. And mm-hmm. just been like, oh man, I'll, I'll read something else first. It's 1,400 pages. I'll give it a, I'll give it a pause. And uh, I was house sitting for my parents. They were on vacation. They live, you know, down south. So I was like, well, maybe I'll just get into it now. And mm-hmm. the thing is, a page turner. The character work's amazing. It's the classic. It's a post-apocalyptic take on like good versus evil. You know, there's mm-hmm. a lot of uh, Christian religious undertones. Um, the, the antagonists are great. You care about all the characters. It has like a, a Lord of the Rings Tolkien almost aspect with like the journey across America to like just build a new community and, you know, fight the antagonist. I don't want to spoil too, too much mm-hmm. because it, it really is worth a read if you're a fan of King or even if you're not there, it's, it, it could be kind of almost considered horror, but it's really not, um, Mm-hmm. It's very genre bending. Um, it's got horror elements, but really it's just an epic of uh, a post-apocalyptic America. Mm-hmm. And it's it's just so worth it. I, if you haven't read it, go read it. You're doing yourself a disservice, especially if you're a King fan like me and just didn't pick it up because of the length. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not long-winded. Right, you it's look at it like, yeah, it sounds good. Look at the book. Oh, hell no. Just put it in the book. <laughs> yeah, just keep it moving. But... Uh... He'll get, let me get the uh, smaller book here, but uh, no, but uh, no, nah, yeah, appreciate the book of the week. It's funny, I was thinking about our conversation we had we, before you came on. We were talking, and you were telling me about the book. And you said, Yeah, you know, I was, you said you were babysitting your uh, what was your mom's dog? Your... Yeah, the the new Finland, her name's Buffy, and, and uh, like... <laughs> yeah, she's she, she, she gets pretty... over there. Oh, the, the little bang, I think the cat's knocked something down. Oh, yeah, they knocked down the dog food holder. Nothing spilled. We have this, like, plastic container we put the dog food in, and the cats use it as a springboard to jump on things. And <laughs> I'm really I laughing think... at this. Anybody that knows Mike and, like, yeah, outside of this knows that it's always, like, some... <laughs> it's just always, you always got something going on, don't you? Just always <laughs> some movement, some, <laughs> some, uh... it's all Constantly good, on the move. Yeah, that's why we love Mike, but, uh. No, I was talking when we had our phone conversation before you came on. We were talking. I was giving you a brief about the show. And you were telling you like, yeah, when I was down there, I'm not gonna say where they live, obviously, but they live more towards southern Ohio, like yeah, Amish country type. And you said, yeah, I was outside at night, and it just was so dark. It was the darkest I've ever st- stood outside. It reminded me of the book I'm reading. And I was yeah, like, yeah, it reminded me of that time when we had a uh, the whole city's power went out here back in the fall last year and i remember sitting out like i didn't sleep that night because it just i don't know it's it, it was too much going on but no power freaks me out <laughs> yeah i gotta sleep like a fan on or something i gotta have like some noise or say plus it was still warm out at that time like it wasn't like fall fall yet right and so i was like i can't sleep when it's like too hot either i'm just like just oh dude out. i hate the heat i'm i'm yeah. right there with you i can't wait for the fall and my the wife I, mean, I, I like the, the summer and the warm weather but I like seasonal I change. I like there's certain things I like about each season. It's more cozy in the fall, but uh, <laughs> it's way more cozy. Oh, not, and not funny cozy. story, real quick before before we uh, get on out or uh, what have you. Um, there's a uh, so when I was at my parents, right, and mm-hmm. when it was that dark, my parents were like, "Oh man, we forgot to tell you it was trash day." 
could you could you take the trash down our driveway? Their driveway is like three hundred feet at least. Like it's not a it's a very long driveway. And I was like, "Are you are you kidding me?" And they're like, "What? What are you scared <laughs> of?" I'm like, "I don't know." wolves i don't know what's out here <laughs> like the bears, a, uh, a crazed amish killer i don't know what oh, if yeah. hezekiah amish, had amish a bad Mafia's day coming for you yeah hezekiah had a bad day and he's just gonna run at me with a sickle like i don't know but so we i, I basically get a flashlight and i take this like all pink trash can i don't know why it's all pink but that's what they had <laughs> and i'm I've sprint with this thing and like it got to the point where like the wheels are like dragging behind me. Like I don't even have the wheels upright and I'm just like throw it onto the side. It was like that scene from SpongeBob. That's what exactly like, I was about to say. Where yeah. he's, there, he's afraid to go outside. Yeah. It was awful. Oh man. Well, you got, at least you, you took it out there though, right? I did. I did. And uh, I, I was so mad at him. I was like, you couldn't turn me during, during the day. When it was when it's light out, yeah, I hate that too. Like when you you think you, you think you hear somebody outside. Oh, I, I heard something, but I was like, it's an animal. No, you ever been like when you're at home at night, you you like that you hear you heard somebody outside or somebody in the house. Hey, I heard somebody outside, and they're like they're like they're convinced somebody's outside, and you always go yeah. outside, and there's nobody out there. But right. I, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I still go, I always go out and check. I'll grab like a weapon and go out there. <laughs> like I'm gonna do. Yeah. Something. You know, like it's today's the day. But uh, <laughs> today's the day. Yeah. But uh, yeah, man, it's crazy. But no, yeah, I was telling you, like everybody, when the power went out that one night, and the whole town was out. I remember I was sitting there like two in the morning. I looked out my front door, and it was like it was a full moon that night too, which made it like very eerie. <laughs> so, right. I looked out and all it was was a full moon. You just couldn't see anything. I mean, and I was just like, okay, so this is what's going to look like when we don't have power or if we've gotten like a post of like, if, if we lost something for like lost power for a long period or you know, who the hell knows. But... Generator. Generators are important. Yeah, you need a generator. Yeah, for sure. My best friend is a novice, uh, what do you call it? Doomsday prepper. Mm. <laughs> I just. Think, I mean... If I could get a generator, yeah, I would. <laughs> I don't want that power. <laughs> uh, I like I like to sleep at night, but uh, you know, I try at least. But uh, yeah, but, nah. You guys thought you would add to that? I think we uh we, we rambled on like we usually do. Um, no, I think we covered everything. Uh, go Browns! Tomorrow is the first day of uh, joint practice with the Philadelphia Eagles. So is that tomorrow. That is tomorrow. Today they're off. Tomorrow uh, the Eagles, I think, just got into town, and we're gonna have a little little show off. Who do you? Oh, I, I saw this on Twitter. Who do you think is gonna start the first fight? Um, what player on our team because, is gonna be the first? It's always gonna be a rookie, I think, because oh, I agree. He already got into a fight in camp. I'm gonna go, and he's. I like his. He got a pick six this past week. I like his. Martin Emerson. Martin Emerson. I agree say, wholeheartedly. I was going to have to say him or lock Perry. Somebody's ass up. He's going to piss them off. He's going to hit somebody. That's what we yeah. want. <laughs> and, I, I mean, uh, if you're a receiver, that's the one corner you don't want to mess with. Martin's not small. No, Martin's he's a big, six, two. He's big yeah, dude. He's big. Imagine what he's going to look like in like his fourth year when he's more right. developed. That dude's going to be a monster. Dude, I and, was uh, I was really happy with the preseason performance and also a little sad because after watching Jerome Ford play, I was like, Kareem's gone. Yeah, I, I, that's I, I, yeah, I, I thought the same thing, and I'm not surprised because Jerome Ford was a, he was the dude in college, but right, but uh, just like he showed, like he can catch, you know, he can make hard catches on the fly. Oh, he's he, nice. He can run with the best of them. Like he looked good. I will say though, and I I wonder what the market is for Kareem. I mean, I'm sure it's a good one because probably you know, like a third. It, like you could probably get a I third. Wonder, round you think pick. they could get a player back somehow? They I mean, a, dude, they they receive they need receivers bad. I mean, I really think the receiver thing's a little overblown, right? Well, I mean, I agree. I don't want to overblow it. It's only, but they do. They can use at least one more, like solid, right? At least solid. I mean, because David and Joku's good, you know, and right. then I Donovan Peoples Jones, I think, is going to succeed more as a two because last mm -hmm. year everybody forgets we were asking him to be the one after Odell left, right? So like yeah, that's tough to do a bit year, especially if Baker wasn't himself. You know, it was all it yeah. was just a fiasco. But. So like, I think he'll do better as a two. 
you know, everybody's like, oh, Anthony Schwartz is one of your best receivers. Your receiver core so bad. I'm like, he's maybe like fourth or fifth on the depth chart. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. like I, I think they'll run like gadget plays with him just because he's supposed to be fast. I haven't really seen it like translate to the field much. Yeah, um, he's a little time. I hope you are. Yeah, I mean, we knew he was a project, right? Um, oh, another really uh, happy surprise was, uh, and I didn't see this coming, was Isaiah Thomas from uh, – from Oklahoma, he had Our two sacks, is, three is, tackles for loss. He was a seventh round pick. That defensive line, the whole what? unit, is pretty solid. I like what I saw from the D line. I like, I like what I saw from Jordan Elliott. Finally, he looked really good. <laughs> yeah, I, I, Tommy it took forever, man. Tommy Togiai, who I've watched because he's at he Ohio looked, State. Yeah, he's he coming along. But also, and then Perry on Winfrey. I think he'll be a good player once he's, you know, he's a rookie, but. Oh, I, I I agree wholeheartedly. Perry, like, their, their interior is looking nice, but I like the mix they have up front. They can move guys around. Yeah, they have experience. They got they got a pretty good front, and then the linebackers too. You got JOK, who I think is gonna be a superstar. Mm -hmm. You got I hope Jacob uh, Phillips takes a step. I think Jacob Phillips will. I've been a Jacob Phillips guy for a long time, uh, and I I like his potential. I like his versatility. I like his right his speed, his coverage. But and then I want to see though, like with Taki Taki, can he become He's always been good against the run. That's so, all he is. And that's fine. I mean, you, you need, need right. Yeah, that you need linebackers like, like that. You can plug and play in certain I don't think he'll ever be a good coverage linebacker. I don't think he's ever going to be out there doing a pass no. play. Who else is um, in there? Oh, uh Anthony Walker. That's a yeah, good veteran. Yeah. Uh, he's a great veteran. He's yeah. you know, great locker room presence and like he's really uh, like he's okay in coverage. He does, he's good enough and he's really good against the run. So I like Anthony Walker there. I think our safety room is super underrated. I like agree. they got disrespected in the new man. And I'm like, y'all gonna just wait. Grant Delpit. I mean, John, I, JJ three. JJ. Those are the known name and Ronnie. Uh, what's his name? And Ronnie Harrison. Ronnie Harrison. Um, but the but guy, then, there's a guy in that room though, that they even all say it. And I watched him in college because he was supposed to go to Ohio state and went to Georgia. I'm not saying Richard it, LeCount. Richard LeCount has that dude has the talent and the upside to be really, really good. Now you gotta get more reps, obviously. He's gotta get out, but and he I heard uh what's his name? Greg Newsom and JOK said it recently on a podcast on the varsity house, and they both said they're like, No, that dude, that dude has it. Like he is does some things that are like special. And I watched him in college, his talent coming out. Of, I watched him in high school because I like to follow the recruiting, and that dude. That's the guy. If they can get him going, that's who. That's who I want to see. Like, right. just get put out there. I think he'll be the like third safety they throw in in like a nickel, like nickel packages. Um, mm -hmm. Like after, because um, we're not re-signing Ronnie after this year. I no, mean, this, this is it. Ronnie's really good against the run. That's really about it. Um, but and here's the other thing. It's like. I want to know what their plan is after JJ 3s contracts up in not this season but next season. So do do we resign him or do we just sign depends how he plays. It depends how the young, it, it depends how he plays, which we expect him to be really good. Uh and but it all spent what if Richard account takes off? What if he gets in there and you never know. What if right. it only takes one moment, maybe a guy goes down or you know knock on wood, but you know you never know. What if uh he he just comes onto the scene, and I think I think Grant is going to be just fine. I think Grant. I think be, Grant's going to be really really good. I, I think do too. He's, he's my breakout good. player. I have two breakout players. It's him, and after the preseason game, I am running the Martin Emerson hype train. That was I, I like Martin Emerson a lot. That like was the most size. manly pick I've ever seen in a preseason he game. Ripped it right out of his hand. It wasn't even really out. a pick. It was just no. Nah, like, it was just like a. It was like a ma. He got mossed. That's what he. Got. Yeah, <laughs> you know, Randy Moss used to do. And then you saw that you see the close up where like like the close up where the um offensive one of the Jaguars like tried to like tackle bro and he mm -hmm. stiff armed the mouth guard out of this guy's face <laughs> and then took it seventy five yards to the house. I'm like, all right. He looks like he, if Andrew, he wanted to, he could play receiver if he transitioned like Yeah. Andrew Barry yeah. knows how to uh, draft himself some DBs. That's yeah. for sure. Those are the two guys. I like to get different names. So on defense, that's I want to see Richard account. This is, I just want to see if there's something, you know. And then on offense, the guy I want to see, 
I just like his versatility. I just he looks like a guy you just get the ball in his hand and let him go is Demetric Felton. Demetric, ooh. I think he's like a I want to see them use him more. I just think you put the ball in his hands, you go watch his college tape. His they like speed, him for his versatility. Because he can do anything. You need those kind of guys. I think there's yeah. you can really do a lot of things schematically with him and, and you can yeah, I like, play a game that like he can run one for a touchdown. Right. I like Demetric a lot. I think because I'm the, the like players I'm excited too, about. He's a dog. Yeah, right. The, the players I'm excited about are just players that I had nothing, like no idea about them. And it feels like as ironic as it is, a lot of those players right now are Oklahoma players. Because mm-hmm. um, <laughs> Mike Woods was a name that kept popping up. I'm and I'm glad didn't... you brought that up. They do his tape before he got hurt and – they said he was like, and you look at and he'll tape. be fine. It's just a hammy, right? Yeah, he'll be fine. But they, the coaching staff said they just said it in the uh, building the Browns episode too. But I saw some. You look at the highlights of him in camp before he went out. That dude looked mm-hmm. like I was like, damn, this dude looks real good. He's big. He can move. He like yeah, he's catching tough catches too, like diving out, like oh, body yeah. control. And, and it's one of those things where it's like you're watching the tape and it's like, who's number 12? Right. I thought that was, I that's not the Daryl Hodge. Who's that? Think, right, it's not the Daryl Hodge. Because I think David Bell's going to be pretty good. He's, David Bell's going to be great. He'll be good. He's just got to grow. I think he'll be the next Jarvis, basically, the slot guy. But Yeah. Uh, yeah. They got Is a, uh, David Bell going to be playing in this uh, preseason yeah, he's, game? Yeah, he's, yeah. he's back off the pup list. Is he? All right, yeah. good. Well, I just didn't see him in the – in the last preseason game. So he just I hope came he back plays. like two days ago, like the other day. Oh, did he? Yeah. Well, I hope he plays a little bit. I want to see what he's got. Oh, yeah. He was a beast in college high school. I want to see him. I mean, well, yeah, I want to see him. But, yeah, Michael Woods, that dude, hopefully, Andrew Barry, I hope he's, uh, this could be another gem, you know, another late round gem. Andrew Woods. Barry does this all the time, and it makes, it must make other GMs so salty. He's just like, and the, it's always sixth round picks. The Rams. It, what is too. it about the sixth round that Andrew Barry's like, I know a guy? Well, the Rams, <laughs> they, the Rams do it. Like, the Rams has drafted this guy out of sixth round. The Rams are. No, he was undrafted, actually. You see that receiver for the Rams this past week? I can't remember his name. He was undrafted, and he had a hell of a game. They're like, right. we might not need Odell. We got this guy now. <laughs> so, right. But, I do. Uh, I will never forgive Andrew Barry for uh, he had the opportunity to just take Amon Ross St. Brown and we picked Anthony Schwartz. I, I'm still upset about that. But I don't know. I'm gonna give short. I'll give Schwartz benefit of the doubt. We'll see. But yeah, Amon Ross Saint Brown speed. is already so good. You know what I mean? Yeah, he is good. But I don't know, we'll see what happens. I don't know. We'll see. It all. I think it'll all work out just fine. But I yeah, then so. I saw the right. right, right ugh, I can't even talk. Real quick before we go, I saw uh, LeBron sign the extension. I really no. you know, I talked about that at length on this show. And I thought, right. I've been saying for a while, it's Dizzy on his career in Cleveland. I still think that because he does have a player option in it. And anything could this be a reason for like him like trading? Could this be like a sign and trade thing or probably not? Or, uh, you know what? I don't think it's out of the question. I just think my initial reaction when I saw it. I still think he's finished his career in Cleveland. I believe that wholeheartedly because I just, it's going to happen. Right. But uh, I just, they offered him almost $50 million. I mean, that's like, it's too, so much money. <laughs> almost $50 so million. Money. He probably saw that and was like, uh, yeah, where's the pay? Like, I can't sign uh, two fast years. Enough. I could do and two I, years. And I get yeah, a player not? option in there. But yeah, but not only that, if they, because I don't, you look at their team right now, they're not going to be that I, good next year. They're round. not doing it. Damn, they're not thing. doing anything. I think I always thought he was going to still play there next year just because it's the whole Kareem passing Kareem in the Lakers uniform. I think he wants that moment in the Lakers because the only moment he has is a bubble ring, right? And, and everybody's so, like put the asterisk next yeah, to that. So he's got to have one more defining moment out there to be called a Laker great. And so, because yeah. you know, it's a fraternity, it's you know, it's you got to you want to be called one of the top guys, and so. Uh, yeah, I think he'll pass Kareem out there this year, and then we'll see where it goes next off season. That doesn't mean because if you go next off season, he only have one year technically left on his deal. Right, that's very tradable. That's if he wanted to, he can actually force his way where he wants to go too, which is not coincidence. But uh, I just think my initial reaction was he's securing his money. 
because I think LeBron's too smart to think that that team's they're not going. Anywhere. And if he was actually trying to help the Lakers out, he would have waited to sign till next off season because it would have helped them right. in the cap. Now that he's signed that contract, now it doesn't help them next off season trying to get more better talent around them out there. And so right. I think this was just – it was a very flexible contract, and it was also – he secured his money too, which, here yeah, I can't blame the guy. $50 million yeah. this late in your career, take it. I wish I could have $50 million. <laughs> a year. <laughs> this late in your career? Yeah, you'd sign the contract, of course. I didn't think they would I – I had doubt whether they would – I knew they'd give him an offer. I didn't think they would actually pull that off. I, I didn't think right. they would actually, like, give him that offer. But I don't know. We'll see. But uh, it's still very fluid. I won't. It's never official till it's over. So, and, uh, right. I, I, yeah, I don't think he's finished his career out there still, though. I, mean, I don't. No. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's all we got for you guys. It's just, <laughs> it's just nonstop over there. At the, I, I, when you Mike, the... when you need to start a vlogging channel, like just vlog your day. Just what's vlog going my on? Cats. A, What's the interest of Mike's life today? Like, what, what's going on today? Twenty little life? bastards, was it? <laughs> what's going on in Mike's world today? All right. Well, I'm gonna let Mike go get back to uh, cleaning up all the mess from his cats. And dogs it's not a back. mess, luckily. They just knocked it down. He needs to go stretch and take a nap. He's getting all Mister Bulk for us. And uh, yeah, I gotta, I gotta get bulk for you guys. I gotta, gotta yeah. make sure you, you can see the. We're gonna see. I can make those videos. Now. I can make those videos where it's like, I did. you want these? And then I'll just like start like touching my yeah. different parts of my body to do this. All right. Yeah, then... I'm going to take you working out with me. That's what we'll do. Yeah. I'm, I'm, all, I'm all the way down. All right. Yeah, for sure. But, uh, all right. But thank well, you for having me for the well, use. I appreciate it like always, brother. We'll see you in the next one. And uh, I'll make sure everything's uh... <laughs> go make sure everything's good over there. All right. We'll do. Go. Go <laughs> Browns. Go Browns. All right. Later. Later. All right, I want to take these off. I want to thank Mike for coming on again, like always. Uh, you know, it's always fun with Mike. As you can see, Mike's a very interesting person, and uh, you know, that's why I love Mike because uh, he is who he is, and he's a very quirky, funny guy. But uh, no, I mean, I appreciate you guys. And we talked sports there at the end, have a little fun. But uh, I know I ranted a lot today in this episode. I uh, hope you guys. We're able to take something away from today from the topic about transitioning to life. And, uh, you know, I had some moments here. I kind of went off, guys, because honestly, this is why the show is called The Reels, because I'm going through this right now. And recently I've been, uh, you know, I've had some things happen, good things, but it's, it's, you know, I'm going out of my comfort zone more and more now. And, uh, but I'm also ready for a lot of things as well that I've waited for a long time for. And, like I said, my patience has been tested. I've been a little testy lately sometimes where I get impatient, frustrated. Um, but all I can lean on is uh, is God. That's all I can do is just keep praying about it and, you know, pray about it more than I talk about it. And so, uh, you know, that's all I can do and just leave it in his hands and just take it one day at a time and just, uh, you know, I even reached out to Dennis, the anxiety guy, uh, recently because of some of the stuff we're going through. Him and I are good friends, like I said, and you know, he told me, he said, just make sure you slow everything down. And I've started to apply that, and he's 100% correct. And that's something I have to remember is just slow down in your life, wherever you are. You know, slow down and just kind of look around at all the great things you have and be content for what you have. And that's really all you can do, man. It's just, that's, that's allowing you just put it in God's hands. But just slowing everything down, and even slowing down how you talk, slowing down how you eat, how you walk during your day, just... And when you do that, too, you start to realize a lot of things you didn't really see and realize and uh, things you had and really just how far you've come. You know, like I said, for me, it's very easy. I could sit and think about all the things I still don't have and get down. Uh, but when I slow things down and when I start to regroup and, you know, check myself and pray to God, I start to realize, uh, you know, how grateful I really am and how far I've come. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we're all going through this journey together. Some people are at different points than others. And that's great. That's what we're all, we should all be here for is to help each other grow, not judge each other, not try to one up each other, not try to make people feel bad, not try to down people. Cause we do, there's too much of that right now. And just think when you go out at night or if you go out to eat or whatever you do, when you're out in public, like when I, when I'm out in public, 
it's just like a weird vibe now sometimes where it's just you ever been somewhere you just look around and you look at the whole picture of people and you just i see a lot of people nowadays just getting really sped up in the rat race and just everybody's trying to compete with each other and just trying to be somebody they're not and that's never not something i'll ever be and so uh yeah again hope you guys enjoyed this episode today um hope you took something from it leave a comment below or if you need want to talk more about it i'm find my instagram on social other social media facebook uh i'm gonna start using snapchat more go add me on snapchat if uh if you, if you guys are on there maybe that's how we can get to talk if you need help with your anxiety or just get to know me more uh i'm gonna start using that more i never really use snapchat so i probably should use it more but i don't know we'll see but uh <laughs> anywho uh yeah i'll see you guys in the next one make sure you like subscribe share spread this message and um yeah that's all i got for you guys today i'll see you guys in the- i'm out of here